Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Elise here of Plan With Elise and today I've got a big box. We have a big box of 2023 budgeting tools that Erin Condren sent to me and I'm really excited to dive in, check out some of the budgeting tools, give you my thoughts and first impressions because these are the first Erin Condren products that I've had the opportunity to use. So let's get to the unboxing. Okay, so I have everything laid out here and we are going to dive into it. I want to say that one of the fun things, I feel like I shared this recently, about having social platforms is the ability to try out new products and work with new brands. And it's just really fun to be able to share with you some different options and what I'm interested in and kind of give my thoughts. And this is like especially exciting to me because this is my first time experiencing our Condren products. So I feel like we have to start with the planner, right? So we are going to zoom in a little bit just to get some closer details on this planner. And I just want to pull it up on their website so that I can get some information for you um, to give you some details. Okay, so I'm not seeing this one on the site, but I'm sure that by the time you see this video, I will find it and we will link it. But the front has, sorry about my ring light, that gold every little bit counts. And then this is going to be kind of a wet erase or dry erase for you to use. So I would recommend using a wet erase or a Sharpie versus a dry erase, because as you open and close it, you're going to wipe that part off. Then we have budget planner. Every little bit counts. This book belongs to. And then this is an overview of how to use this planner, which is really cool because I feel like a lot of times we start a budget planner and we don't necessarily know how to use it. So you're going to have big picture check-ins, goal setting considerations, monthly budget tracking, stay on track, and celebrate. All right, so the first two pages, and again, this is A5 sized, is checking in how I currently feel about my finances, how I want to feel about my finances, main goal for this budget planner. And then big picture finance goal number one, big picture finance goal number two, and big picture finance goal number three. And then we have the first month. So it's going to be tabbed here. This is undated, which means you can start at any time. And then we have the date bills, financial dates, and deadlines. I like that this is kind of a combination of financial dates and deadlines because I feel like sometimes we do have financial deadlines, even if we don't necessarily consider them a bill. Like for me, exam for an example, I know that in December, I have my next round of Botox, which I get for migraines. And I guess it's a bill because eventually I'm going to get one. But before I even get a bill, the neurologist office is going to call me to get my payment info because they have to order the medication to come from a pharmacy to get delivered to the neurologist's office. So that's kind of like a financial deadline. You also might consider holiday shopping, a financial deadline, because even though it's not a bill, it's something that you're going to want to have the money set aside for before that happens. And this is really cool. I don't think I've ever seen this restock on and larger purchases. So for me, every once in a while, I have a big grocery bill because I need to restock my pantry or like recently I had to buy more salad dressing. It takes me like several months to go through a, th a thing, can, not a can bottle, thank you, at least bottle of salad dressing. So that's something to restock on. And then you may have some larger purchases. Our purchasing habits and spending habits vary month to month, season to season. And then you have this space to put your financial goals. So you can kind of like map it out here. You use can use this checklist to note when you've checked them off or just other to-dos that maybe don't fit in either one of these spaces. And then this shaded area as well. And now we have the monthly overview. So overview four, you'll put the month here. Then you have income. So there's a couple of different ways that I think you could use this. You could write the date here and the income number if you get paid in multiple times a month, which I feel like most people do. If you have a partner or someone that you share finances with, you could put like yours here and theirs here. Um, you could also put different sources of income. So for me, I am single, but I have multiple sources of income between a full-time job, YouTube, Etsy, Patreon, things like that. So I could put those down over there. And then you could put your housing costs. So you could put like rent or mortgage and then the amount that's due. 
I'm a little confused by this. I'm just going to look on their website because I feel like maybe it would make sense. I know sometimes we have like actual versus budgeted and stuff like that, but I'm not seeing a um, filled in page. Oh, I am seeing a filled in page. Okay. So in the page example on the website, and again, this is, forgive me for not knowing all of the details because this is my first time using an Erin Condren budget planner, but on the example, it says to put mortgage here and number here. So that would be the housing cost and the number. Or for utilities, you could put like gas, 80, electric, 230, etc. So it's not necessarily meant to be in budgeted versus actual. I think I was confused because for me, most of my bills stay the same every month. The only one that varies is my electric bill. And I guess food bills could vary gas too, but I, the way I do it, I usually just give myself the same amount of money each month. Or as things come up, you could put different expenses like um, health expenses that come up. But then the idea is to do total income minus total expenses, the difference, and the total savings. And then we have a spending register. So one, two, three, four, two, five, and six pages of weekly spending. And then at the end, we're not, we're on to the next month. So again, the bills, financial dates, and deadlines, and this month's financial goals. So there isn't like a separate divider. It kind of just goes right in. This is the divider page. So it kind of just goes right in to the next one. And then the color scheme is changing each time as well. So some nice, it almost looks like their color blends collection. I feel like the cover kind of looks, yeah, like their color blends. And the Erin Condren paper is really nice. It's like a little bit more of a beigey, but it's really toothy and it's a good quality paper. Heard people talk about that for so long. So this is, I'm assuming it's 12 months. Let's see. Oh, wait, there's more in the back. Hold on. We're going to back up for a second. See if I missed something here. Okay, I did. We missed a quarterly check-in. So after three months, you're going to get this quarterly check-in. How I feel about my finances, progress I've made, any pivots or adjustments to make for the next three months. That's vital. Monthly budget reviews or even quarterly budget reviews are so important. And then we have the three big pictures. So you're going to get that, should get that at the end of every quarter. Yes, here. And then let's go towards the back because I saw some things here. So this is your 12-month budget check-in. How I currently feel about my finances, progress I've made toward my financial goals, progress I've made on saving or investing, and progress I've made on paying down debt. What worked to keep my financial goals on track? What worked to keep my spending on track? Any pivots or adjustments for the next 12 months? Financial goals I want to focus on next. And then we have trackers, which I love. I love savings tracker. We know this about me. So saving for, saving goal, and deadline, and then date, deposit, and total. So because it's the easy one, let's say we're doing Christmas. Right, Christmas, the savings goal for me is usually $500. The deadline is typically Black Friday. And then all year long, you'll be able to track your savings on here. And what you could also do is instead of deposit, you could keep it as deposit, but you could also, as it's going on, do like a plus and minus if you took money out for something. So some, an example of that would be um, a few years ago when I was going to my friend's bachelorette party and I was saving for a trip to New Orleans. Well, as I was saving, there was spending happening because I would need to pay for my flight and then I would have to give my portion for the Airbnb and things like that. So I was continuing to save, but I was still pulling money out at the same time. So then we have more. So there's a lot of savings trackers in here. So one, let's go back. One, two, three, four. You could also do this as one long savings tracker. Five, six, seven, eight, eight savings trackers. Then we have a debt or payment plan tracker. So the total amount owed, starting balance, minimum balance, date amount paid, and balance. One, two, three, four. Four, but eight if you want to use both sides. Then we have special occasion budget tracker. 
So that could also be used for the holiday season because aside from gifts, there's other spending, right? Maybe cards or gross, like groceries for a party or something, or this could be for planning a party. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably too many for me. I don't have that many special occasions, but I feel like if you lead a busy social life, that may be a good element in this. And then there's a couple of budget stick, uh, one page of budget stickers. So these are fun, savings, payday. And then you have the same wet dry erase on the back. So this is the A5 budget planner. Let's continue. Next up, we have a budget accordion file. Crunchy sound, okay. Now I have a few thoughts on, on uses for this just by seeing the title. I've gotta be able to undo it though. What is going on here? Okay, all right. I think it was like my nails, I couldn't get my, my nail under it. This is pretty, I think this is the flora pattern and this is budget file. So I think that if you're someone who likes to use cash envelopes but you don't wanna bring all the cash out with you, nor do I think you should, this is a great way to put to use this for cash it's also a great way for to store receipts so these are like pretty heavy duty cardstock in here but i think that for receipt tracking and cash tracking this is a really good tool and it's pretty and it's pretty compact too if for some reason you wanted to you probably could throw this in your purse um because it's not it's not very large at all so that is the accordion file up next, let's pull out the budget sticker book. We have budget functional sticker book. Stick to your budget with over 600 colorful and mixed metallic budget stickers. Ooh, so we have these bill do stickers. I love that this is like a book. I, that I'm like really excited about. So bill do amount and paid and then bill do corner stickers. And then we just have some more color schemes here, the same stickers. Up next, these say no spend challenge. And then you have a piggy bank, an envelope, and an open envelope. And then payment plan. So the, the item you're paying on, paid balance and payments left. And these say payday. Weekly spending. And then these bit payday and bill due sticker corners. Weekly spending in the jewel tones monthly money check-in, budget, saving, debt, goal, and then these little piggy bank icons, dollar sign, and shopping cart icons. And then monthly check-in again, but these are different. These have plants, so kind of like growing, with, which could be investing or retirement, and then this also is more of like a stock market type sticker for investing. And then this says this week's money goals. I like that because then you can set up a money goal each week. We have the dollar sign and the shopping cart. Same this week's money goal. This is a diploma, so you could use it for student loans. And this is an open envelope, so like an outstanding balance. And then more icons. So we have kind of looks like a receipt here. Oh, no, but there's a lightning strike on it. Maybe electric is the plan for that. And water, uh, internet and Wi-Fi, TV, house, car, phone, credit card, and fire, so heat. Yeah. And then these fun little piggy banks with the gold foil around them, and you could write the amount on there. So that is the functional budget sticker book. And there's more, we're not finished. Thank you to Erin Condon for sending me such a big package. It was exciting to see that when I opened my door today and saved it from the rain. Now we have a budget notepad. I love a notepad. Okay, so this is great, I think, for someone who maybe doesn't need an entire budget planner, but they're looking to get on top of their finances a little bit more. So we have weekly spending, week of, this week's budget, weekly money goal, date description, category, and total, debt paid down, added to savings, total spend this week, and next week's budget. And this is 
I should have talked about prices. This is $10, and I think that's a really good price for something like this. Um, the budget planner, again, I'm not seeing it right now on the website, but their old budget planner is listed for $25. So I would assume it's about the same. I don't know. Don't quote me. The sticker book is $16.50. The accordion file is $12.50. Okay. Now, so that is the book. I think, let's see how many pages are in this. I'm not seeing that there, but let me get back to it. Okay, sorry. This is 50 sheets and it's six inches by eight and a half inches. All right, continuing on. Now we have some inserts. So these are inserts for a ring planner. So there's six holes punched for the rings. I don't have the rings to put them in but we're gonna go through these inserts and check them out. And then this is a monthly bills dashboard also punched for rings. So you'd write down all of your bills and then each month you could write down the amount or you could write down when you have paid them. Wet and dry erase two sided reusable and positionable fits A5 ring agenda. So that's what this will fit as well. Let's move this over and there's something in the back. Oh, stickers. So this is the Petite Planner budget book. So this comes with, well, this was part of this pack, so we'll get to that shortly. But I wanna see if this is the same setup as the other one we had or different. So we have the budget planner. It looks so far like it's the same. It is, so it's just a matter of if you want yours on the coil or you want it on rings. I think that what's nice about doing it on rings, and we say this, because I'm a mainly discbound planner person, is that you can take them on and off and you can add to it and punch things to put in it. So yeah, this is going to be the same as the budget planner that we just flipped through. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but let me look at the size and see if it's the same size. Yeah, it's gonna be about the same. Let's see. Okay, perfect. So it is also A5 sized, but again, the difference is either the coil, and this comes on a gold coil. I also want to note, oh wait, is it pop-offable? It is pop-offable. I feel like there's a better word for pop-offable. You could totally do a different cover on this if you wanted to, because these have perforations, which is really fun. So you could change your covers for this season, since we know I like customizable things. Let's look at or configurable, not customizable. And then we have these two sticker sheets. So like budget, payday, savings, some fun sticker sheets that coordinate with that. And then again, that monthly bills dashboard. Up next, we are continuing with the, we get the right name here, this is a sage, I don't see the name. It's a folio, so it's a soft folio. Let me get more details. Okay, I realized we got a little blurry in that last clip. This is a sage vegan leather folio. So it's so lightweight and it has this little snap closure. You'll be able to put your pen in there and then there's pockets. So there's a pocket here and a pocket here. Which you're probably supposed to put your planner in. It says that it fits a 12, or 18 months, seven by nine coiled books. Now I don't have a seven by nine coiled book to share with you, but I do have, it's a little bit big because my cover is huge, but this would be just an idea of size, a happy planner coil. So aside from my crazy big hardcover, this is going to fit really nicely in here. If you were using a regular cover or you had a coil, this would fit without any difficulty. There isn't a top or bottom on it, but this is something that I think looks nice. And I like that there are some pockets in here. You could put a marker here, you could put a pen here. So I think that that element is really nice. And again, it feels good. So this is a little bit more expensive. This is $39.50, but this is their Sage Vegan Leather Folio. Okay, and now we have a couple more products. So let's move this out of the way. 
and we have these budget dual tip list markers. All right, I grabbed a sheet of paper so we could test these out. These are budget dual tip list markers. And I think the idea is that on one side, it's a marker and on the other side, it's a stamp. Color and functional finance stamps and fine tip markers, new go-to writing tools for budgeting. So let's test these out. I'm intrigued. Okay, so this, they're not all, they're not all going to be the same, the color that it looks like. So these four are going to be black ink. So let's make sure we can see here. Um, test. Oh, like real black ink. Okay. And then the other side, this is supposed to be a circle. All right, maybe. First one, I felt like I pressed too hard. This one I can't seem to get again to the full circle. Okay, so you have to press pretty hard to get it. But that's interesting. You can kind of like, I don't know, this is going to be the same. Um, color code your system, but with icons. This is a check mark. So that one works pretty well. Still have to press decently hard. Like if I go lighter, I don't get the whole thing. So just like a nice firm amount of pressure on that. I don't know why I'm still doing the tests on these, but <laughs> they're the same, but it's okay. This one is going to be an asterisk. So this color is ras raspberry. This color is Robin. Okay, so same. In order to get the full imprint, you really have to press hard. That's going to take a little bit of practice for me. And then the pink is also black tip. And the pink is... A piggy bank, which is cute. So let's get this. I'm like trying to get it the right way. We might be upside down here. We're going to see. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting most of the print. I'm not entirely sure that I'm seeing a piggy bank. Like I see it on here. Unless I'm still going the wrong way. Let's try, okay, this way. Hmm. I, I'm intrigued by these in theory. This one's going to be green. Intrigued in theory. I think that stamping, there we go. The dollar sign is good. But if you don't press hard enough, it looks like an S. I mean, I don't have much experience with stamping, so maybe someone who had a little bit more experience might have a little bit better luck with it. But I also think that it can be really hard to get a good imprint on something as small as this. This one I'm not having more trouble. I'm finding myself having to like press really, really hard. Okay, that was the best one where I like held it by the top and really pushed it down. So I don't know that I would call these a must have in terms of a budgeting tool. Um, I know that people love the dual tip markers. So I think that the dual tip markers would be great. I don't know in how much I would use the stamping part of these. I feel like if they were maybe just bullets, like circles that are filled in, similar to like, what are they called? The zig, the zig dot or something. I feel like that might work better. Like having one tip that you can write like this and one tip that you can dot, but it's an interesting idea, right? Okay. Let's move that over. And then finally we have the budget file folders calendar. Organize your monthly budget and reach your financial goals all year long. Let's open this baby up. Aaron Cundin budget file folder calendar. We need to, we need to zoom out here. Okay. So we have a calendar here, 12 months. It's a file. So in here you could put receipts and bills. 
And then you can mark your bill dates here. Fixed, but does this start in January? Wait a second. Oh, I was seeing February because it's the next month. Okay. So your January fixed budget, flex spending, savings goal, debt, and goals. And then the other side of it is room to write. And then this month's overview. So you have your budget overview here. And this is perforated because the idea is that when the month ends, you'll tear along the dotted line to remove the folder and store in a file cabinet. So I feel like this will be a really good tool for someone who wants to kind of see everything as an overview, like on their wall and also keep like hold on to it, but not necessarily need it in immediate access. So again, you could tear it off and store it. So we have January, February, March. I like that there's a lot of holidays in here. Like even Purim, which is a Jewish holiday that I never usually see in planner calendars. Um, April, sorry, May. I'm just like getting focused on here. Cinco de Mayo, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Father's Day. This is probably just for sturdiness. July, there's Ashura. The beginning of um, Muharram and the ending. Sorry, September, October. I'm just like reading these and forgetting to talk about them. <laughs> we have Diwali, Thanksgiving, Veterans Day, Election Day. And then December is this pretty green. Oh, and stickers. See, this is like the part that always gets exciting are the stickers. So a ton of icons to use. These all have gold foil. Then we have bill due stickers. So you can put these right on a calendar. And then I think what's really cool is the additions of these. So... For February, it tells you the first is Black History Month begins, so you could put that in your calendar. March, Women's History Month, International Women's Day, International Day of Happiness. April, National Arab American Heritage Month begins, Autism Acceptance Month begins, April Fool's Day. May, Asian Pacific, Her Asian Pacific American Heritage Month begins, Jewish American Heritage Month begins. I didn't know that May is Jewish American Heritage Month interesting. Um, we also have Mental Health Awareness Month begins, International Workers Day, National Nurses Day, Teacher Appreciation Day, June. Pride Month begins, Loving Day, August Women's Equality Day, September Grandparents Day, National Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month begins, September International Day of Peace, Bi Visibility Day, October LGBTQ plus IA plus History Month begins, National Coming Out Day, November American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month begins. National Adoption Month begins. Dia de los Muertos begins. Dia de los Muertos ends. International Day for Tolerance. Transgender Day for Remembrance. December International Day of Persons with Disabilities. And then four stickers to add your own. So I feel like this is an, this is an interesting product. I always like when there's a new type of product, something that I haven't seen before. So this, again, is the budget file folder calendar. Okay, so that's everything. We've got a lot of items here, and I want to thank the team at Erin Condren for sending this to me. Um, I will link everything in the description of this video. The only thing that I don't believe is available right now, but it should be coming back soon, is the A5 budget planner. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely like hold on to the video and um, grab one of my links so that you can be notified when it's back in stock. Um, but I'm excited to try out some of these tools. I really love this Sage Folio. I like this weekly spending sheet because it's really small and compact. And like you could honestly even take a page and like fold it and put it in your wallet so that you can track your spending on the go, because I think that can be a difficult thing sometimes, is the spending on the go. I also really like this accordion folder. I feel like it's gonna be really helpful in terms of sinking funds. So let me know what your th thoughts are on these products. And um, I think that's a wrap. So thanks so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do take a moment to like this video and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time.